Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Thermal Energy 2.1. Sorry, I am truant in getting this video to you. Uh, but ooh, let's let's take a look at the, the big picture. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Visualizing motion energy. Nice air conditioner there. That's cool. Right? Right? I what let's let's find out what we're doing here. Let's jump right into the warm-up. Ooh, letter from a concerned parent. <clears throat> Dear Mr. Chang, remember Mr. Chang was a principal of Riverdale School, the school that we we're trying to help figure out which heating system they should get, right? I'm worried about your proposal to install a groundwater heating system in my daughter's school. I don't think that a water at a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius has enough energy to heat the school. If the school is too cold, the students won't be able to focus on learning. Sincerely, David Lee. <laughs> well... <laughs> well, gee, David, thanks for backing up your claim with a whole lot of evidence. Oh, wait, I guess your opinion counts as evidence. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, but wait a minute. What if David has a point, though? Uh, what if he's right? What if, what if the groundwater system doesn't have enough energy to, to heat the whole school? Because, you know, at this point, I don't have enough evidence to say either way. I can't refute his claim. I can't back up his claim. I, I don't know what to say to David right now. Um, maybe, again, maybe he's right, but maybe he's wrong. Here's what I need to do. What we need to do. We need to find out more about this. We need to find out, okay, would a groundwater system actually have enough energy to heat the school? Well, we have a question here, a couple questions. The first one is, what do you think energy is? And the second question is, what do you think energy has to do with the heating systems? Because that's what he says, right? The groundwater heating system doesn't have enough energy to heat the school. What does energy have to do with it? We haven't really gotten into this idea of energy and these heating systems yet. So answer these questions and then come back to me. Hey, the next part, we have a video. It's the most exciting video of 2020. Um, <laughs> just wait, just wait, you'll see. Now this video, I did put on my YouTube channel, Air and Water Demonstration. It's also attached to this lesson. Um, so go ahead and watch this video. Um, it's it's going to keep you on the edge of your seat uh, the entire time you're watching it, trust me. Uh, but watch it and then come back to me. I know, right? I did not expect the ending. <laughs> I mean, what a twist. <laughs> the The air... It got warmer. <laughs> the water got colder. I, I did not see that. I, I, I don't know. Um, I love it when you know there's a surprise ending to to movies. Uh, but what did we see here? What did we actually observe? Um, yeah, the the water in the cup, the temperature dropped. The water in or the <laughs> the temperature of the air, the temperature increased. Um, okay, okay. Let's see where we're going next with this. Uh, we're going to the simulation. Let's make sure we read the instructions carefully. Uh, kinetic energy in the simulation. Use the thermal energy simulation to explore kinetic energy. Part one, open the simulation. I'm sure I have it open here somewhere, but hey, let's open it again. Um, part two, add one sample and turn on the view kinetic energy toggle. I can do that. Watch, watch, I can do that. I'm, I'm, a, I'm about to right now. Add a sample and turn on the kinetic energy toggle. Boom, done. Uh, what else do I have to do? Explore different ways to change the kinetic energy of your sample. Okay, hey, we've done this before, right? Um, and let's take a look at our scale here. We can see that low kinetic energy is uh, represented by this dark gray color. High kinetic energy is represented by this goldenrod, fancy color. Um, and we've, we've done this before. We know how to change the kinetic energy. I can make this more yellow by making it what? Hotter. Mm -hmm. I can make it hotter, boom. Now I have high kinetic energy, right? Based on my scale here, I can make it colder. Oh, man, someone's like cooking onions. It smells real good. And now I have colder, 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 much lower kinetic energy based again on my scale. So uh, based on your exploration in the sim, what do you notice about kinetic energy? Um, wh what did you notice? Go ahead and write it right there. Uh, and here's part two. Start over by resetting the simulation. Let's do that together. Reset. 
Yes, I want to reset. Add two samples. Oh, but wait, let's read number two first. Do not turn on the view kinetic energy toggle yet. Okay, okay, I won't. You know, let me read number three anyway. Make one sample have faster molecules than the other sample. Okay, I can do that. Add one sample, boom, add another sample, boom, and make one have faster molecules than the other. Well, I know how to do that. I turn up the heat. Get those molecules moving. Boom, all the way to 100. Let's get these. Getting real slow. So this is a very dramatic difference, right? This is as slow as I can get these molecules. This is as fast as I can get these molecules in the simulation. <clears throat> now, here's the thing. Here's what we got to do. What do you predict about the molecules with the two samples? I predict that the warmer sample with faster molecules will have what? More or less kinetic energy than the colder sample with slower molecules. Well, hopefully it's kind of obvious based on what we just did, which one is going to have more kinetic energy, but go ahead, make your prediction. And then let's turn on the view kinetic energy toggle to check our prediction. I'm going to let you do that. Uh, hit that kinetic energy toggle and see. I observed that the warmer sample with faster molecules had, what was it? Was it more or less kinetic energy than the colder sample with slower molecules? Mr. Wigan, what is kinetic energy? We keep talking about it. Great question. Kinetic energy, the energy that an object has because it is moving that an object has because it is moving. So um, we want to understand temperature now in terms of kinetic energy. When something is hotter, we want to be able to say that it has more kinetic energy. We want to be able to understand that. This is where we're heading with this. Um, when we first started talking about temperature, we said, hey, well, temperature is, yeah, it's a measure of how hot or cold something is, but it's also a measure of how fast or slow the molecules are moving. That was the first realization we had. And now we're adding this kinetic energy element to it. Well, kinetic energy is the energy an object has because it's moving. So if it's moving faster, it has more kinetic energy. If it's moving slower, it has less kinetic energy. And there's a direct relationship. Higher temperature, faster movement, more kinetic energy lower temperature, less movement, lower kinetic energy. So again, we want to start thinking uh, in, in these terms. What's number three? I don't even remember. Oh, infer. Great. Uh, to reach a conclusion using evidence. We talked about that in class. Uh, hey, the last thing, uh, student to student discussion, word relationships routine, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that. Um, so that is a quick overview of 2.1. Um, we'll see you next time for 2.2. .2.